These days, having a difference in opinion will get you labeled as some type of phobic. Encourage a healthy diet and exercise? Sounds like you're fat phobic. Want your kids to learn about math and science instead of pronouns and gender identity? Clearly, you're homophobic. Acknowledge the biological differences between men and women? Well, obviously, you're the worst one of them all, you transphobe. Recently, there was a viral video that showed Tiesa Meskis, a transgendered person who's also a member of the city council, walk into the Suture & Sons Star Wars shop in Aberdeen, Washington to confront the owner on camera about a sign that Tiesa felt was transphobic. For context, the sign read, if you're born with a bleep, you're not a chick. The store's owner, Don Suture, refused to take the sign down, which then escalated the confrontation to both parties debating the semantics of what is and isn't considered a woman. Eventually, the argument moved outside the store, which led to the trans activists threatening to have their supporters return to protest that following weekend. After the video was uploaded online, an organization by the name of the Chehalis River Mutual Aid Network announced plans to protest outside the shop, but later canceled due to all the media attention this story received. For context, about five protesters showed up in support of Tiesa, while approximately 400 counter-protesters showed up throughout the day in support of Don and his store. But this was only after the network called for the public to harass the owner via phone and, from what I'm assuming, leave negative reviews for the store on Google, Yelp, TripAdvisor, and Foursquare. Let me start off by saying that business reviews are intended to inform the public about your own personal experience with that shop and to provide feedback for that establishment. They're not, however, intended to report incidents that you hear from someone else. Every company deals with bad interactions with customers, and those reviews allow business owners an opportunity to make things right with that customer and improve their business overall. But when someone leaves a bad review for something that they didn't experience themselves, it could mean a death sentence for that company. Now, I'm sure some people would find this to be a good thing because who cares about the business at that point, right? If they did something wrong, they get what they deserve, right? Well, I would argue that making illegitimate reviews for a company is just as bad, if not worse, than what the original issue was, which has an eerie similarity to how cancel culture operates. People call it accountability culture to hold someone accountable for bad behavior. But what happens when accountability turns into blatant harassment and bullying? Who holds the bullies accountable? Let's take this incident with Tiesa and Don, for example, and imagine if 100 people left one-star reviews for the company. Those ratings could be enough bad publicity to cause permanent damage to that brand's reputation. Assuming I also worked for the store, that bad publicity could result in less sales. And if a company isn't making money, they can't afford to pay their employees. So if I wasn't directly involved in this particular incident, is it really fair or morally okay to cut off my livelihood as an employee? If I had kids to feed but I lost my job because of something someone else did, is it fair for my kids to go hungry because of accountability? And what would that do? Do you think it would cause me to perceive trans people in a positive light? Or would I develop resentment towards trans people because now I've lost my job, I can't feed my kid, my free speech is being suppressed, and now they've reinforced this stereotype that all trans people act in this way, which will cause me to avoid them like the plague. You get what I'm saying? Anyways, I really love this story because it highlights the importance of not consenting to cancel culture. When you cave to the mob's demands or apologize when you didn't do anything wrong, and we'll get to that in a second, it emboldens the mob into thinking that this behavior is how they get their way. In the same sense that a temper tantrum might help a child avoid nap time. As a parent, if you were to cave into a child's demands, essentially making them the boss, it would only reinforce their behavior, namely being entitled and manipulative. And as a store owner, if you were to cave into the demands of social justice, it would only reinforce the idea that they have authority over how you run your business or that you have no rights to express yourself freely. For as much as I complain about Hollywood turning my favorite characters into different races, I understand that I don't own Hollywood, nor do I have the authority over the casting decisions. I can complain about it, but I'm certainly not going to walk into the studio and demand to speak with the director. I can, however, take my money elsewhere, or if I really wanted to control the casting, I would go to film school and do it myself. But let's actually consider the main reason Tiesa went into the store. Earlier in this video, I said that the store's owner, Don Suture, didn't do anything wrong. 
and he didn't. What Don wrote on the sign might have been hurtful to some people, but it certainly wasn't transphobic. Being phobic means to have a feeling or reaction that results from an irrational fear or hatred for something. Simply disagreeing as I do with the notion that trans women are women isn't transphobic, it's reality. I don't have hatred for trans people, but to diminish all of the struggles that biological women face as just a cosmetic surgery away, personally, is disrespectful in itself. If someone wants to live their life as the opposite sex, I'm not gonna stop you from doing it. But that doesn't mean that I'm obligated to perceive them in the same way they perceive themselves. I've been a woman my entire life, and I don't know the first thing about what it's like to be a man. Nor do I believe that a man knows the first thing about what it's like to have your monthly period or experience female-specific health issues like ovarian cancer or polycystic ovarian syndrome. And let's not forget about the miscarriages, the pregnancy complications, or the guilt that many women feel for not being able to conceive children or not having enough children. Of course, I can't change the fact that some people will disagree with my sentiments, but let's say for the sake of this argument that everything I just mentioned is considered transphobic. Okay, and what's your point? Did I threaten you? Did I do something to make you believe that you were in any danger? When the trans activists canceled their protests because the story got so much publicity, were they in any danger? No, but they convinced themselves that they were. My point being is that people need to learn how to separate hurt feelings from physical harm. I'm a content creator and post videos online for a living. Do you think I enjoy people commenting hurtful, sexist, or racist things about me? No, but I understand that the internet is a marketplace of ideas and it's unreasonable for me to expect my critics to stop hurting my feelings like these people right here. I'm not saying this behavior is okay, but I've accepted the reality that a utopian fantasy where everyone gets along simply does not exist. So I just deal with it because it's either that or I give up on my career. That being said, despite all the insults that people fling at me, I'm still here and I'm still thriving because I learned to focus my energy on my craft instead of worrying about how the world perceives me. So in the case of Tiesa, who spoke to reporters following the incident, they said, and I quote, my intentions of sharing the video was to alert our community that we had a bad seed there and we needed to do something to eradicate hatred. Actually, Tiesa, what you're eradicating is free speech, which is Don's American right. His sign wasn't hurting anyone, perhaps hurt feelings, yes, but people try to hurt my feelings every day. If I can accept the reality that I can't force someone to agree with or be nice to me, then what's stopping Tiesa from realizing the same? Or maybe a better question would be, if the sign truly hurt Tiesa's feelings, why didn't they remove themselves from the situation and just shop somewhere else? This form of activism actually hurts the acceptance of the trans community because it not only disregards the existing rights of Americans, you know, <clears throat> free speech, but also it polarizes society by Tiesa attempting to speak on behalf of all trans people. If the transsexuals I know are able to live fulfilling and successful lives despite being misgendered or accepting the biological differences between men and women, then why couldn't Tiesa? Does that mean that Tiesa's emotional pain is worse than other trans people? How do you prove that? Hate speech at the end of the day is still speech. It doesn't automatically mean you're in danger, but it could be a motivator to build emotional discipline. And quite frankly, I think that would be more empowering than conditioning people to react emotionally when they hear something that they don't like. There was a period in my life where I avoided looking at mean comments about myself because it left me severely depressed when I read them. But now I'm completely desensitized by it because I've accepted the reality that it is impossible to live my entire life shielded from mean comments. This meant that I had no choice but to not let these comments bother me. And once you understand that no one is exempt from having their feelings hurt, it makes life a whole lot easier to navigate because you'll spend more time enjoying yourself and less time fighting for artificial change. And what do I mean by that? Well, just look at cancel culture. When people apologize to the mob, are they really sorry? Or are they so afraid and so anxious that they apologize just so they're left alone? This is why highlighting diversity of thought is so important. Because if Tiesa met a trans person who wasn't phased by that sign, it would expose the most reasonable solution to this entire problem. Let it go. I think we can all agree that physically assaulting someone is a no-no and threatening someone is just as bad. 
But discouraging free thought is to invalidate someone else's right to express themselves as transsexuals have the right to express themselves as the opposite sex. The same right that people like Don, a Vietnam vet, fought for. Agreeing with someone's lifestyle change was never a part of the constitution. And I'd argue that eradicating transphobia would artificially fortify trans people by promising them a utopian world without hate. Do you think the people fleeing Afghanistan care about pronouns or being misgendered? Or do you think they're more concerned with trying to flee the Taliban to avoid execution or true oppression, including not being able to vocalize their opinions freely? Something that a lot of Americans take for granted. A little irrelevant, I know, but I think some folks could benefit from considering a different perspective. But hey, that's gonna be it for me, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you have a suggestion for a future topic, let me know in the comments below. My name is Gothics, this is Right Now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.